My name is Samuel Joaquim Bukim of Hello FM, Kumasi Ghana. Well, the results from the first leg at the Baba Yara Sports Studio has given many Ghanaians the optimism that this one might be better than most Ghanaians really thought. If you compare the first leg, our performance, this a be what we did at the Nations Cup. Clearly, it was a departure from the performance of the Nations Cup. And it's really gingered the boys, the squad, the nation itself, the supporters, and we believe tomorrow the Super Eagles of Nigeria will witness a different Black Stars. The optimism in the camp of the Black Stars is super high. We are not coming here as tourists to Abuja. We are not coming here to play second fiddle to the Super Eagles stars. Their stars are comparable to our stars. We have the Hianacho with Leicester. We have Amati with Leicester. We have, uh, we have Jordan Ayu with Crystal Palace. We have Moses Simon. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Jordan Ayu for club in the last two years have played 58 games, scored only two goals. That's the worst return by any striker since it's football started. Hold on, hold on. Since, no, since football started in 1930. Mm -hmm. That's the worst return of any striker in 58 games. Even defenders have scored more goals than him. So the excuse that he's not being used as a direct striker does not hold it. And well, don't you ever mm -hmm. compare... Jordan Ayu, one of the worst football, footballer on the planet, with Moses Simon. Having said that, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you credit, Amate is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Having said that, Felicia you Fennec said, you Fennec said, Fennec said Roma, yes, fantastic. you said that, mm -hmm. you said that, mm -hmm. you have optimism coming into this game. Very much optimism. Are you saying that in the home game you were not expecting to win? In the home game, most Ghanaians were not expecting because of the performance of the stars at the Nations Cup. But our game against the Super Eagles at the, at the Babayara Stadium gave us the hope that we are turning a new page. And clearly, if you look at the Super Eagles themselves, some of us thought they were coming to Ghana to really display you know, a high superlative performance. But it did not go well for the Super Eagles by their own expectations and by their own you know, preparation. So before, before, here, before this game, before this game, yeah. you people said things like, uh, at the Babayara Stadium, mm -hmm. you beat Egypt six goes to one. Mm -hmm. You don't lose on that ground. No matter what happens, you always win. Mm -hmm. Nigeria came in, got a draw out of that game. Mm -hmm. Even with all the antics that you people put up, mm -hmm. uh, putting up a scaffold instead of a, a proper a, airplane stairs, you should, you blocking should, the way. You I'm, blame I'm, I'm, the airline that brought the Super Eagles to Kumasi. You can't blame Kumasi for what happened to the Super Eagles. Per what we saw on the television when we all saw them hopping from the airline onto the steps which was quite despicable but you can't blame Ghana for it. Are you saying the airline is supposed the airline is supposed to come with the staircase? Have you ever seen that before? I'm not saying the airline So the, you're saying that the airline airpiece is supposed to come to Ghana. I think the communication the communication between the airline is the, the airport not supposed to have a staircase to the airport have so many staircases of international you know, standards. And then so you people decided saw, to put up a fraudulent scaffold. I don't think now, having said that, mm -hmm. you took the Super Eagles again to a beer parlor press conference. Was this all done what to destabilize the team? No, 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 you no, took no, them to go eat Banku for press conference? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you call it a beer parlor press conference. Anyway, I think that is part of the, the you know, the, 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 the small details of the encounter. There are bigger issues of this encounter. And for me, the bigger issues of this encounter is that on this stadium, a country like the Central African Republic came here and won. Uh, you're making a mistake. It wasn't on this stadium. And it was in a different, it was in Lagos was in State. Nigeria. Yes, and winning anywhere is not a problem, actually. If you, if you follow football, you know that that is good. Uh, but the thing is, you are coming into Nigeria, playing in front of over 80,000 supporters mm -hmm. and you are so confident that a team that is led by a striker that have not scored a single goal in I uh, just got only two goals not, in 58 Jordan games Jordan is the guy that will lead your line like Jordan is not leading the line so who's your who's the man that is leading the line the, for you the, the, the young chap in the first leg you saw him Felix Afenajan of AS Roma Jordan are you look at his club you know football he plays for Crystal Palace and he's always on the flank Crystal Palace has so many center forwards, and I think it's not a first option when it comes to the 
you know, the main striker. So, what part in, 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 the, in the last in the last 15 games, how many goals have Jordan Ayew scored for but Ghana? So if you look at where he's playing his club football and where they are using him, basically, he is becoming an assistant or an offensive uh, player who assists the other strikers. He's not the main man. So, I cannot accuse Jordan Ayew of not scoring goals. I think his total contribution to the team. In the first leg, his total contribution to the team was quite energetic. He had he had opportunity to make six crosses in that game, and all of them were wasted. I I believe that when it comes to the crosses and the corner kicks, I think Jordan are you for it. I I for instance don't believe he should be taking a corner kicks. I don't believe so. If anything at all, at his height, he should be inside the eighty yard box. Trying to, you know, beat the man getting the ball into the net. But he can't score. That's the reason. But thank you very much for your time. For 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 for, for tomorrow, nobody knows. Tomorrow might be his day. But we are here, not as a one man team. We are here as a competent team. We are here as a component that's coming to fight for our ticket to the World Cup. And I'm telling you, we are not coming here to come and play. It is. We are coming to play hard. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint you. you. To Ghana, you people will go Ghana. home crying and not be able to eat your your bad your beans and rice that you call jollof or your banku or whatever quick cook whatever you do. All right. Um, my name is Kobe Stone. I work with Multimedia Group Limited in Ghana. The Adum Cluster that is the Chi or uh, the local uh, cluster in Ghana. And um, I mean we are here to to cover such a historic game between Ghana and then our brothers Nigeria you know I'm saying our brothers because um, when we talk of Ghana and Nigeria you know that rivalry is there even though sometimes we see things to be uh, especially with this uh, uh, qualifying World Cup qualifying it's so sad I mean seeing Ghana playing against Nigeria but hey that's the draw one has to move on so um, we are here to uh, be part of the history that will go on between Ghana and Nigeria. Let's go back to the first game in Ghana in the Babayara Stadium in Kumasi. It seemed like Ghana deliberately employed some tactics to destabilize Nigeria. First off, from the airport, instead of a ladder for the plane, it was scaffold. The press conference was held in a buka, like they were going to hit Banku. And then on match day, our team didn't get into the stadium until two hours for five minutes. Was that the strategy to destabilize Nigeria? Well, I don't know any anything about what we are talking about um, because um, you know sometimes we follow most of the stories, and then um, it didn't occur to me seriously about this ladder thing we are talking about. I saw something on social media, and there was nothing like a Nigerian player. Uh, coming down from a flight by ladder or whatever. So, was actually a scaffold. Well, I don't like I said. I don't know anything about it, and I can't comment about that. How about uh, the press conference that was held in a buka? I don't know what you are talking about, buka. But uh, if my understanding, you know, just like we just came from a press conference with in this um, this auditorium or this press room. Maybe how big this one is, we compare to how maybe the one you were expecting. That's why maybe you are t you target us, uh, whatever you are calling it. But um, I don't know. Well, uh, if you are talking about press conference, it's organized by the football association or the NSA national sports Center. Those who were in charge for this particular match, we were part to to just go and cover it. Alright, all right, let's go into the game proper. Yeah. What was your expectation? I'm going to say your means the whole Ghana. What was your expectation? Because I always look at Ghana as one state, one Nigerian state, maybe a kitty state because Ghana is not even as big as Lagos. But what was your expectation going into the match and then after the match, how would you rate the game from the Ghana perspective? Actually, this is what I was expecting from you from the beginning, Dan, what you were talking about. And we are here to cover the game. And uh, everyone's expectation is to win. And um, when it goes to Ghana, like Augustine Govan was saying a while ago, you know, uh, we believe the coach, who is our new coach, had a strategy to take some of the players out, especially with uh, Samuel Chukweze. But hey, you know, 
the governor insisted it wasn't a strategy to take him out. He still believed that the boy played what he was supposed to play at the just ended press conference. So we are still expecting that um, Coach Otuado will still have a strategy that can play out some of the players that, you know, the big names from Nigeria. I mean, when I say big names, you, you would tag Ghanaian team as underdog because they have not played for a while and it's, a, it's just a new team looking at the performance from the AFCON, how the Nigerians played, their performance was super. Even though when you have, in, in the Bible they said, you get the, the, everything from the world and you lose your soul, you've not gotten anything. Nigeria won all their matches and the most important game that they were supposed to win, they couldn't win it. And I'm expecting that to happen here. Maybe they will, they will play all their hearts out, but I'm expecting that, hey, Ghana and Otuado and his boys will outclass them and then we will, we will qualify from them. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Amanda Lettin, uh, football commentator or sport journalist. Well, uh, going to the game against Ghana in the first leg, I was one who was full of uh, optimism uh, based on the quality of players we had assembled for this picture. But well, despite the omission of two key players, the goalkeeper Okoye, and of course uh, one of the best on the continent, who friend the day. And looking at how eventually that game panned out, I wasn't entirely disappointed. I thought it was going to be a very hectic fixture. Uh, initially, the players had the mindset that they were going to play at the Cape Coast and um, some alteration. It had to be Kumasi, one of the most vibrant footballing cities in um, Ghana. And it wasn't surprising that you know, from the airport down to match day, they were intimidated. So I think it would be foolhardy sort of, despite the quality and the team, to expect them to blow out the Ghanaian side. I thought 0-0 was a bit tricky, but I'll take that over a 1-0 defeat or a 2-1 scoreline. If I had an opportunity to start a different exile, I genuinely wouldn't. I think the players who started you know, offhand um, were the best to start. From the goalkeeping department, Zoho, um, who kept at the World Cup, so I still think that experience would always be with him. He's very vocal. That's something Maduka doesn't have. At the heart of the fence, we'll always go with that Oyibo wall. The wing back was brilliant, Seidu and of course uh, Malai, you know. And in the midfield, it was good to see him. Bonke, not one of our regular players, but I, I thought he did average. No one can replace him, did he? At the moment in the country, I don't think any player can. And Aribo was brilliant until the manager took him off. Up front, always has to be a him. Uh, Victor Osime, um, Kelechi Anachu, and of course, uh, Samuel Chikweze and Moses Simon. Disappointed a bit with Simon and Chikweze, but these things happen. We don't always have players at their best always, uh, but we need them in the return fixture. I thought overall the first leg was brilliant. Um, going ahead to the second game, if I can mention, I think we would make use of the home advantage and the importance of playing at the World Cup. It would be it would be catastrophic, you know, for lack of better words, to have Ghana of all nations come to Abuja and pick the World Cup ticket. So I'm optimistic that, you know, after 90 minutes, we'll pick maximum points and we'll qualify for the World Cup in Qatar.